good afternoon everyone um it's been um interesting session for what i've been able to attend this morning very uh, value adding and very interacting my name is naomi mutinda i'm the regional marketing manager for sub-saharan africa uh for cipla um and as cipla really our motor motto is really about together towards a timeless purpose of caring for life so together with you as healthcare providers our purpose is really about caring for life. And um, we have a strong heritage. We are currently actually celebrating 85 years of celebrating life. And in those 85 years, there are some key achievements that we like to highlight and we like to share. And some of that is about uh, some of the things that we are really proud is, uh, for example, access, being able to provide access for medication for all. Uh, we were among, we were the first actually to provide the first in three in one HIV um, stroke AIDS ARVs at a dollar a day, uh, and subsequently, of course, the impact that comes with that. Um, we, we are really proud in terms of the impact that we have made. Uh, we are proud uh, in terms of the difference we are making, and in fact, in 2016, we um, we were actually uh, listed in the Change the World companies. Uh, that is doing good, and, and we are extremely proud of that 85 heritage. heritage. Uh, it would be remiss to, of course, say something else that we're extremely proud about is being a pioneer in respiratory therapy. Some of the things that we'd like to highlight as CIPLA is our, in, in terms of our 85 years of caring for life. Uh, we have mentioned that patient access is really at the heart of a lot of what we do. So in terms of the one in three, I've already mentioned in terms of HIV, so in terms of HIV, one in three patients actually take CIPLA HRVs. We have one of the world's largest inhalation portfolios. We are one of the world's largest suppliers in antimalarials, and we have quite a number of factories even here in Africa, including Uganda, where we actually churn out these antimalarials. And we are amongst the top two largest dispensed companies in India. And look uh, closer to Africa, we are the third most dispensed company. We are actually the third largest in South Africa, growing at about 10%. Um, and in terms of OTC, one in four patients use C plus OTC, and it's a portfolio that we're looking to grow even here locally in Kenya. We're in 80 markets, we have a huge uh, revenue. Um, um, yeah, and something to highlight considering the theme of today's event that we have a fully vertically integrated business model. We actually have over 1,500 products in 65 therapeutic categories and over 50 dosage forms. Uh, so we do quite a bit in terms of R&D um, to be able to churn out the dosage forms, the therapeutic categories that we are looking into. We have a strong R&D pipeline and you will see uh, some of the things that we are hoping to bring in uh, locally. We have a robust quality management system to ensure data integrity. Uh, and even from a product integrity standpoint, we are able to uh, provide bioequivalence data and we are able to just basically uh, um, be, um, be in compliance with a lot of what uh, regulators would, would expect from us around the world. Uh, we, we really have proved ourselves to be a partner of choice. Uh, you can see when you talk about diabetes, um, when you talk about respiratory cardiometabolics, we have partnered with, uh, in, with institutions such as Dancen, such as Novartis globally, uh, Gilead, Tiva, MSD, uh, Adcock, Roche, and Smith and & Nephew. And basically all I'm trying to uh, uh, bring to light is, is really CIPLA um, is, is a force to reckon with. CIPLA is looking to strengthen the pipeline um, in the next coming few years. So be on standby, watch out um, in terms of some of the things that we'll be bringing in um, in, the no in the next course of, year, um, course of years that, they, that will come. So maybe from a portfolio update, some of the things that I would want to highlight to you as, as, as the Pharmaceutical Society of Kenya um, is I will, I will, it will be remiss for me not to start with respiratory, considering that we are a spiritual leader in, in, this, um, in this country. Um, and one of the key things that we would want to highlight that we know a lot of you already are probably familiar with, but I think for us, any opportunity to highlight this and to emphasize on this because of the change being so fundamental is the fact that when you're thinking about treatment of asthma, uh, it is no longer uh, recommended to treat adults and adolescents with asthma with short acting bronchodilators alone. Um, and, and the reason we keep emphasizing on that is because really the, the bronchodilators continue to be the ones that are primarily used by a lot of patients. 
There could be there could be factors such as affordability, but there could also be a lot of factors such as lack of awareness um, in, in in terms of uh, what is what is happening in terms of. Uh, uh, what should be happening in terms of their management. And because a lot of these people, we will, they will end up at the pharmacy uh, before they actually go to the doctors because they have really gotten used to using their bronchodilators uh, as their primary means of management. They will just continue, you, you as pharmacists and of course the farm techs continue to be the single point of contact for a lot of these patients. And therefore we are relying on you uh, to just make sure that uh, our patients are being managed appropriately, to give them the appropriate information, and hopefully they will seek the appropriate care in, in regards to that. <clears throat> Some of these key changes, uh, because this is a key change in the sense that SABA has been the first line treatment really for the last five years. And for GINA guidelines to come around and to turn around and to actually say, look, guys, you cannot give SABA alone to patients alone. They, are, they must have had fundamental reasons. And from the statistics that they were able to present um, as GINA guidelines, you will find that 30 to 37 percent of adults uh, have acute asthma, which is really, really uh, high, which means they're really predisposed to uh, uh, exacerbations. 16% of those patients are near, uh, with near fatal asthma and 15 to 20% of those adults are actually dying. And these are people who had symptoms. You would imagine that these statistics would be for people who have who are extremely symptomatic as far as asthma is concerned. But the reality is that people who had less than weekly, uh, they had less symptoms, had symptoms less than weekly. So they were not very common. They, 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 the symptomology was not very high, but these people you will find are ending up with acute asthma and to the extent of dying. This really is about, uh, it really explains why the uh, GINA 2020, 2019 and into 2020 have made such a fundamental change. So this is how the new guidelines look like. Uh, again, I am cognizant that some of you might already be aware of this, but just it's, there's no harm in overemphasizing in terms of this, that really now any patient, whether step one, step two or step three, the preferred controller needs to be low dose ICS for Metro. Uh, and preferred reliever is actually as needed low dose ICS for Metro. And it's what a lot of people will be familiar with in terms of smart therapy, where you're using the same, the same device for both reliever and controller. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, uh, any patient who is, who he is, is confirmed to be asthmatic in, in terms of adults and adolescents, in terms of 12, year, 12 years and above, must be on an ICS for Metro, irrespective of the severity of their asthma. And if it's step one, if it's really around mild asthma, they, they can use it as needed. And as needed means anytime they have any form of symptoms, whether it's some form of exacerbation, uh, some form of breathlessness, uh, um, they're having uh, at night, they're not able to sleep because of not being able to breathe, then they should use their ICS for Metro uh, uh, and not necessarily have to use it in the morning and in the evening, but as needed, they should use it as their preferred reliever so that anytime that they are exposed to the, to the, to the, to the reliever, they are also exposed to the ICS, which is really what prevents the future exacerbations and therefore hopefully mitigating the risk of some of the things that have been witnessed before with, with uh, mild patients. Um, and then, of course, when you go to step two, there's a conversation around ICS uh, or still, again, as low dose, uh, as needed low dose ICS for Metro. Then you continue with low dose ICS LABA and medium ICS LABA. So what does that mean in terms of foralin? For every step, uh, from step one to step five, it is encouraged that your patients will be on, on foralin, whether it's 200 or 400 uh, doses a day, daily dose. So um, this is the recommendation that they should be on some form of uh, um, um, ICS uh, for Metro to just mitigate the, the future exacerbation. So you're continuously exposing your patient to some form of ICS so that even if they take their time before they actually seek a healthcare provider, uh, continuously, that we know they're continuously, continuously being exposed to the ICS, which is what truly brings a control uh, for the patient. Um, then the other communication that would be important for us to share is CIPLA, and, and we're extremely proud about, and we you will see a lot of us and hear a lot of us in regards to pain management, is our CIPLADON. 
Uh, for those of you who might be familiar with it, this was the previous spark that we was uh, previously available. Cipladon is an effervescent uh, uh, tablet, and we know with effervescent tablets, or, I, or rather I should emphasize, effervescent tablets really are absorbed significantly faster than your ordinary tablets. And what that ends up doing for your patient is the relief is significantly faster than if you offer tablet formulations. Uh, um, I won't emphasize on the other points um, as you are pharmacists and you're well aware of this. This is, yes, basically pure paracetamol. And the thing that I would want to encourage all of us is to consider to fizzle out the pain and fever with effervescent, with the fizzy formulations of paracetamol because of the additional benefit that it gives significantly to the patient. And then secondly, just to communicate that there has been a pack change uh, for a newer modern look. And, and Cipladon 500 will be coming into the market um, in, within the month of April. So look out for that. And we hope that you will be able to make that available to your patients. And finally, the last communication that I think would be critical for me to communicate to you as pharmacists in this country is a Cipla we have provided as well um, in terms of our wide range of quality products that we have available in the country. We also now have an azithromycin tablet, uh, 500. We all know the benefits of azithromycin. We have one now that is available from Cipla, fantastic quality. We know that beyond the originator and the other formulations, there's, you know, uh, we, are, we are hoping that we will be the middle ground in terms of the ones that will not be able to afford the originator, but we will want something of really, really good quality in terms of packaging and the actual product, and it will give you confidence that you're giving to a patient something that will work. Uh, recommended retail price is actually 650 shillings and is now available um, within the, the distributor uh, networks. That will, all, that will be it from me. Uh, thank you so much, um, everyone. Have a good afternoon.